What is going on, Metaverse? Animositas here, and I'm pleased to be joined today by a fellow Wolf. Yes, you heard me, that's right. Uh, one of the 300 members of Wolf's DAO is Ulti. And uh, for those that haven't seen him before, he's very active in the industry uh, on Twitter, in a number of Discord uh, servers for different projects that I'm involved with. Um, and I would say that he's really as knowledgeable as anyone that I've talked to um, about the sector. And he has a very, very cool project. So most of what we do on here is, is Web3 gaming related. Um, I think that his project is Web3 gaming related, whether he knows it or not. Um, but really excited to hear about Dive, his project today. So Ulti, it's great to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to talk to you. Yeah. So Ulti, everyone has a unique story with how they arrived in Web3, um, you know, how they found crypto. And, and especially as a founder, I'm sure you've got an interesting one. So tell us a little bit about how you got here, and um, then we'll talk about your project. Well, back in 2021, uh, a friend of mine did a Bitcoin and Ethereum 101 or a Crypto 101. And uh, after that point, I'd spent my whole career uh, over a decade in banking and in finance with an actuarial science background. And I really loved, I love finance. I love how money moves and understanding it. But I think the, the banking industry itself, when I heard about crypto and the idea of owning your own money and being in charge of it and uh, how it would flow, that to me was so exciting that I just, I think I just dove in head first and I started doing research. Uh, I do research on DeFi projects got into slowly into NFTs and seeing how people could really become uh, really the owners of their own assets. And with that, I think uh, after a year, after a little bit, I actually exited Web2, exited finance and joined a Web3 uh, venture capital firm in the research and incubation team and just got to spend all day researching different platforms and DeFi and tokenomics and understanding how, how the whole industry is put together across the board. And later in that year, that was back uh, last year in 2022, uh, I I'd had an idea that I'd been working on from before uh, joining them. And I was thinking more and more about it. And I got to uh, ETH NYC. And there was a, uh, it was a uh, not an incubator, it was a hackathon. And at that hackathon, putting together the project, putting together a team and really sort of building it out and saying, hey, can this, can this work? And from there, just the response was overwhelmingly positive. Everyone I was talking to loved the idea. Of, oh, is it live yet? You know, when can I use it? <laughs> yeah. And I think to me that that said, you know, this is something that it's it's an NFTs. And you talk about Wolves, I will get to that. I'm sure that I, I just love NFTs and how, how community forms around them. And I love the DeFi side and the finance with my with my background. And this just just brought the two together in such a perfect way uh, that I, you know, I, I couldn't refuse taking it forward and and, and building it out. So that to me is my, my whole, you know, this, this journey in finance and in NFT and DeFi all the way to this place where I'm, I'm excited to be building something right at the intersection and on the cusp of, of what's possible in the industry. Mm. That's amazing. And, and I really feel like that's a, that's a similar story to a lot of founders and builders that I talk to is whatever they were doing in kind of a web two world, like they didn't realize where it was going to take them, but based on those skills, that knowledge that they acquired, um, when you, when you pair that up with the magic of blockchain, all of a sudden you get all these crazy permutations, uh, you know, as far as what you can do with that knowledge and, and the technology together and, people that have a big enough vision to see how to combine it uh, oftentimes get get frankly too bored or uh, you know with, with any other activity besides sort of founding their own project and just running with it and, and becoming you know, sort of leaders in the space so glad that we've got you here with us and uh, to your point I actually heard I think probably before you were anywhere in the mainstream about your project um, so for our audience tell us a, a little bit about dive what what is it? You know, what are you building? What's the, the end problem that you're trying to solve? Well, we sort of talk about Dive as an NFT short selling and lending platform. And some of that feels like maybe that's familiar. You know, we talk to people and they go, oh, I've heard of that. You can do it here. But we really are a brand new concept on Ethereum. And I'll tell you why. So first of all, let's talk about why, why we even exist and, and why you need short selling, why you need lending here. We think that the NFT markets are totally broken. Because at the moment, you only have this buy-sell pressure that people are only motivated for price to go up. You only want to hear the echo chamber of up only, up only, and why projects are good. But what we saw in the bull run is projects climb and climb and climb and climb. 
until they don't and they crash and they crash, they crash really hard and people just lose a ton of money. And I think a big reason of that, when you look at other markets like equity markets and you go, well, NFTs, you know, the collectible markets, are there, are there any parallels? But in equity markets, you have the ability not just to buy, but also to short sell. And so you have two competing, if you have two competing people where they have different theses of whether things should go up or down, they can actually take advantage of that and, 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 and better profit against that. Whereas here in the NFT market, again, with only the ability to go up, you end up with these unsustainable swells and no liquidity means things crash. Mm -hmm. So in the market as a whole, you have holders and people who buy NFTs. And right now they can't actually do anything with those NFTs. They're waiting. All they can do is buy low and try to sell high and they can't really earn along the way. And traders who see things that are overpriced, they can't profit if price is correct. And they can't also help prices get to a real, uh, a real established level that that's um, that they should be at, at at the market pricing for them. So by enabling short selling, you unlock two things: you unlock for holders the ability to profit without selling because they're lending out and getting uh, and getting paid. And for traders, you give them all these new things, new trading strategies, more capital efficiency, which is better NFT pricing discovery. So we think we're solving a problem that unlocks this other half of the whole NFT trading ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So for, for how do we even do that? You know, it's, it's actually, uh, I think it sounds complicated at first, but when you take a step back, it, it's a fairly straightforward process. You have two, two groups of people. You have holders and you have traders. And the holders are people who own NFTs and they want to do something with their NFTs. So they'll set three simple things. They'll say, how much are you going to pay me to borrow my NFT? How much are you going to set for collateral if you walk away and never come back so that I, I get to keep from you? And how much, how long do I want to let you borrow it for? Those three things. And the lenders, they also say one thing that's critical. They allow any NFT to be returned to them from the same collection. So the reason that's critical is borrowers then turn around. They say, great, I'll pay you that fee to borrow your NFT. I'll post the collateral uh, because I, you know, I understand that you need that for your insurance. And I get to borrow your NFT straight away, but sim uh, different from a simple rental where I'd have to return that to you later on, because I can give any back, I can actually go to the market and sell it today. And then I can watch the price. I can watch the floor price. And I know I have a fixed amount of time that I can, I can buy and return one back to you. So if I've sold it today and I'm watching it, I'm watching it and the floor price is going down, 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 that's perfect for me because later on I get to buy one that's cheaper from the floor, give it back to the lender. So as a borrower, I've now, I've borrowed an NFT. All I've done is I've borrowed and returned an NFT. It's simple borrowing and lending, but I've effectively short sold the collection because I got to borrow and sell up here and I got to buy later on. And if the price went down, that meant that I could, uh, I could profit. Mm -hmm. And the lender is someone who says, well, that's for me, I was going to be a long-term holder anyways. I believe in the project. I'm actually, I got to put my NFT to work because at the start of the process, I had an NFT at the end of the process, I have an NFT. But I also got paid. And even though it's a different NFT, I got paid for the ability to, to do that. And I can even take that NFT and do it again. Mm -hmm. So we have created the system where we can pair borrowers and lenders together that allows short selling to happen and really unlocks a whole new avenue of trading and utility for NFTs sitting in people wall people's wallets. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting because uh the way that the NFT market works today, I also think you've got two different two different properties of NFTs, right? So you've got the kind of rarity element where people will buy, they'll, they'll pay 10x, 50x even for a legendary, you know, one of one in a particular collection. And then you've got the, the I think, majority of the transactions by, by a wide margin, maybe an order of magnitude or more, that are basically just floor price, you know, plays by different traders or, or, again, community holders that they want more of a particular asset or whatever. Um, and so I think you're really targeting and catering to that that latter group. And you're saying, good, if you want the legendary one of one, like obviously you're not going to loan that out and just take back anything from the collection. But the vast majority, call it 95% or 90% of any collection is going to land in that second grouping that you're then able to basically leverage in a, I don't want to say a fully fungible way, but maybe a, a more fungible way than, you know, than a typical token. Is that, is that a fair way to put it? 
Yeah, you got it. I, sometimes I like to think that we're putting the fungible back into non-fungible tokens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you're, uh, and we're not we're not the only people to try to to try to do that. But I think the way we do it, as you said, is you have maybe a ten thousand PFP collection. Most of those ten, like. Uh, 5,000, 6,000 are going to be more floor NFTs. They aren't going to really command a premium or do you have people accepting accepting uh, offers as well? Mm. So that's uh, like below the floor. So we really, I, I agree, cater to that. But the added bonus, I think, for us as well is if you have something that's a little more rare, you can still set the price, you can set the fee higher than someone who has just a floor NFT. And that will allow people to also uh, traders who might say, oh, I'm looking for a specific laser eyes for my collection and I've got another one and I, I just want to swap it out. That can let them swap it out and, and pay a bit of a premium to do that. Or it can let someone someone else take the market risk and say, I think I can sell it for more than you think you can sell your laser eyes. Right. Maybe I can do an OTC deal and, and I have buyers lined up. So you can actually, it even gives more opportunity for traders to have access to, to, to um, to do more things with the same collection that they might really know very, very well. Right. No, and, and that's, you know, that's one of the things that from an investing standpoint, you always tell, you, know, you can see individuals that know an ecosystem very well or that know a particular project very well, um, if they have the appropriate tool set, um, that can be very valuable for them, but oftentimes they're more limited. So, so t tell me a little bit about kind of where you guys are in terms of development, uh, team size, funding. So, I mean, the concept itself sounds sounds really amazing to me. But you know, how are you going to get there from from here? Yeah, I, you've actually caught us at a really exciting time in our development stage because we have we've been building, uh, I'd say, behind the scenes for months. Because while we started to you know get our socials out there, we really only focused on that after we had our developed product, after we already within our community started testing and getting feedback of what are the features people want, what are the features people need, how do they want to see it? I think a lot of the challenge of this, this, uh, this kind of concept is that it really is totally new to the ecosystem. And so not only are we going to have to have uh, regular user acquisition, I think there's going to be a user education uh, point that comes on with it and having a smooth user interface and user experience. So getting that right is takes a lot of thought, a lot of effort and, and understanding not just how things should work, but how the ecosystem thinks they should work, how people are going to think about them. So the exciting part about where we are is actually, we, we, you know, we just hit a really big milestone I, I, for us this week was we had our smart contract audit which uh, is exciting because for something, anything in NFT and DeFi, I think yeah. you really need to have the contracts to be uh, audited by by really good, uh, really good teams and uh, knowledgeable ones because it, it's so important when you're talking about people's assets. And uh, the other aspect is we've um, we've launched a second version of our test net within our internal team, and we've been playing around and testing it and and trying to fine tune it. So we're at a cool stage because we've already we've had a working product for a few months now already. But we've uh, we've updated it. We've made it more user friendly. We've done things for gas optimization. We've done things for security. We've done things on UI, and we're getting to a place where we're almost at the point where we're going to invite people in, uh, our, our OG and our early supporters, to come and take a look and try it in private beta. Uh, and that should be coming in the in the next couple of weeks. That's awesome, and and I I can tell you're just hearing you. You know the excitement. Um, you guys have as you see. You see excuse me, as you said, have been building for a while. Um, so tell me a little bit about the team that you've, you've put together. I know you mentioned the hackathon as kind of a, you know, a starting point for the idea generation. Um, you know, how have you found it and, and you put together the, the supporters that are making this a reality? Yeah, so from from the hackathon and then looking to well, it's not just me and and my background. I'm not the I'm not the developer, the the software engineer. I'm more in the the product and the finance, as we talked about, it, and the NFT ecosystem. So uh, truly, from from the hackathon, the excitement from people. One of the members of our team who was helping build the code was uh, was looking and, and talking to us and said, you know, they're actually really excited about that. What we're doing. Is there a place for them to come on? And uh, so we we brought them on full time as a developer, and they're they're someone who's backed, uh, who was coming off a job at a Y Combinator backed company in, in software engineering. So we were excited to it was a, a great partnership there. And so they've been uh, they've been in NFTs a little bit, and we're making their transition to Web three. So bringing them on uh, as well 
from there, the the background that I've got within Wolves I know you mentioned them earlier, is a community, a really tight knit community of 300 people in the NFT space, and really leadership across the board in in marketing and operations and business and and leading games. So we've expanded our team and brought on other members from Wolves to help us both with operations uh, as well as with marketing to help. Uh, help set the right plan and set the right structure in place so that we can we can grow. And uh, as he always talks about, you know, how do we getting that viral content and figuring out how we can, you know, share the excitement that we have with the whole community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's awesome. And and I think it's it's really important to be building that community from the from the get go. Um, you mentioned a, a few minutes ago that there are other you know, kind of competing products and and similar ideas that maybe are are taking place in the market. Um, Things like Bendow or JPEG. Um, so, do you do you consider these types of projects competitors? Uh, and if so, like, what would you say is the unique value proposition that you guys have that you don't think anyone else is really leaning into in the space? Yeah. So, I think uh, when you hear of both an NFT Fi, which it's funny that there's a, a protocol that sort of <laughs> talks that is NFT finance, uh, but you have NFT Fi and Bendow and JPEG and those are all, and you hear it, you know, they're NFT lending platforms. You're like, okay, so Dive is an NFT lending platform, must be the same. But funny enough, we're actually a completely different product. And I, I love that because, first of all, I love those protocols in the ideas that they're bringing forward more ways to use your NFTs and, and create utility. But for them, their business model is such that you have an NFT and you can borrow crypto against your NFT, you know, the NFT is your collateral, you're borrowing crypto, you still then have to figure out what you need to do with that, whether you're, you're basically leverage trading off your off your asset because you're borrowing crypto and you need to generate wealth because you're going to pay pay returns. So I think it's a wonderful model, I think, especially with some of the, that Bendow had some challenges with their liquidation and their LTV ratios. And then uh, that, that was good. Honestly, it was good for the ecosystem because they did tighten up and change the better structure. It got more awareness around NFT Fi, which I think is something that uh, that should continue to grow. Whereas Bendow, again, is talking that you have you have your NFT and you're borrowing crypto. But with us, you have your NFT, you're actually lending your NFT. Someone is borrowing your NFT, they're paying you crypto. So they're paying you to be able to borrow it, just uh, just as if you could go and just for a borrow and, uh, borrow and lend for a rental. And that model is, is totally separate and lets us do something completely different. So I think that uh, I don't look at them as competitors because, again, their business model is, is different. But I think that we as as communities and as platforms are allies really in building, bringing forward the NFT finance space and allowing new use cases, new utility for things that to do with your, your NFTs. Because, again, as an NFT holder, and I, I talk to so many people who uh, they they call them they say oh I'm you know I, I talk about this platform and they go oh well I'm I'm more of a long term holder mm. they got I hear it just time and time <laughs> again and I say that's perfect because we need long term <laughs> holders you're we want customer. people <laughs> yeah. exactly exactly you have conviction in your projects you don't want to sell and maybe you've had a run up and you know the price is up mm. but you're stuck you don't you can't extract any value for yourself yet until you really do sell out and you don't want to sell out but if instead you don't really care which one you have in the collection, especially a PFP uh, or sort of a community token or an access token that they're all the same. You can get paid from your NFT right there. And I say this, that's great. Like, you know, we, we need people in the ecosystem who right now are sitting with NFTs and don't know what to do with them. Don't know other than just, I'm going to sit and hold on them. We're going to unlock a new option for them to do something and mm -hmm. make those NFTs, you know, put them to work for them. Yeah, it's really interesting if you don't have like a staking sort of mechanism in your project today, exactly to that point, you you don't really have options. So uh, one of the videos that I did pretty recently on uh, what ownership do you actually have of NFTs, it was it was targeted towards gaming, um, but I highlighted different types of um, elements of ownership that you can have. And one of them was collateralizing your assets, right? And so in the real world, if I want to, you know, collateral, you know, uh, borrow against my vehicle or or my home, you know, I have the ability to do so. Now, most most items that people probably own aren't worth enough to, you know, that you would want to collateralize. But if you're talking about, you know, an NFT that's worth several, you know, several ETH or whatever, um, that's a meaningful amount of money. So I think this whole concept of being able to unlock 
that collateralization. And I'm going to say in, in either direction, right? So exactly like you said, with, with NFT find or, or, you know, uh, Ben Dow or whatever, they're going to give you money. You're, you're kind of going in the opposite direction, uh, where you're a holder and you're basically saying, I, I intend to be a holder afterwards still. Um, but if you want to, you know, to borrow mine, you know, I'm, I'm sort of on the other end of the table, you know, to, to allow you access to it. So I think this is really interesting and it, if it does anything to help reduce volatility of uh, market prices in the space, I think it's a good thing because I, I, I also being, you know, having an economics background, I want, you know, I kind of want the real world to uh, reflect true valuations. And um, yes. there's times when I just pull my hair out, like what in the world is going on? Uh, and I always remember one of my econ professors saying, you know, one of the famous quotes is the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. And you've got to, You've got to really internalize that message in Web3 for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, so much of why we're building what we're building as well is because we've seen such volatility and really collection prices go to places that that they shouldn't because they're not realistic. They're not market realistic valuations for those projects. You know, there was there was a whole um, there was a whole boom when Goblin Town came out of uh, like they and they have I think they had a really a cool approach. They built an ecosystem and a, we're building a culture. Um, so regardless of what you think of them, there were a hundred or a thousand like thousands of derivative projects right after them trying to copy them. Of there's this no Twitter, no disc or no Discord, no Telegram, no roadmap, no team, no value. But you know they don't say the last one, and people yeah. are just trying to to trade and, and flip on them. And if instead you could again short on the way down, uh, I think that that would have helped get to market realistic prices faster mm -hmm. and prevent people from bag holding in ways that they they really didn't need to during that time. Yeah, yeah, oh, I think that's fair. So one of the uh, interesting questions when you you were explaining the project in one of the servers, I think it was in ETH Lizards, it was really good. So if you've got um, an upcoming collection that maybe has a lot of hype around it, we know there's going to be uh, interest in the market. Um, what do you need to do either as a project or you know how do you make sure that there's some liquidity in the NFTs available to allow the process to work, right? So you've got to be able to kind of get off the ground and is that too difficult in the early days? Do you have a mechanism that you've already identified? Yeah, so I think at, at its core, you know, at, at least for launch as well, we're not planning to gatekeep which assets people can put up. And we are excited to see how our users choose to which assets they want to lend, which ones are, are going to get borrowed. I think that generally things are going to fall into two camps. Uh, you know, my prediction is that you'll have the, the bigger blue chips, things that have consistently big volume that there's people that really understand those markets. They're big enough that there's also the volatility around them means that there's significant price movements. But again, right now you can only profit up. So allowing unlocking that profit down, I think will enable even more trading, more liquidity for those communities, better, uh, more realistic price action. Cause now you have people actually taking collection offers a lot more if you're the borrowers and you want to do quick selling. So increasing the liquidity, increasing the trades and even royalties for the communities, which is one thing that makes it good for communities. And I think that blue chip, that uh, that's one group that will get a lot of trading. And then the other is the one that you've also just talked about of hype collections. You've got feel of this FOMO. You look at them, it's brand new. Like you have this Porsche, the Porsche mint that just happened. And then they had their, they had, uh, you know, the FOMO and they cut their, their, they cut their mint. And now there's a lot of, there's a lot of volatility in it. There's a lot of speculation and we want our lenders. We want people to think, oh, I've just, I've just bought an NFT. And it's gone up in price, but like, I like Porsche. I want to stay with them for the long term, see what they're doing. I want to extract some of that value. So I, the next thing I should do is come to dive. And I think part of, so part of it will be around our education and making sure we're, we're there when hype mints are happening, telling people like, Hey, you've just got this NFT, come put it over here, do, do something else with it. Don't just sit there going, Oh, now I have to just wait for a year while they do anything with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, as a platform, we don't have to be taking that directional market risk. We don't have to be buying the NFTs and, and putting on the platform because I don't want to be seeding it with one by one by one by one. I really want to get yeah. those communities there. What we as a platform though are enabling is instead of just saying, you're going to let the borrower take it for a week or two weeks, especially around hype mints, especially around pre-reveal, 
there's so much trading happening in such a short time. So we're, we're enabling borrowing periods that a lot are a lot shorter. So, oh, you want to lend it out for three hours. You want to lend it out for six hours. And I think as long as we have the right education and the right understanding by the, the traders, the, the borrowers, the people that want to come in and short sell, that you have this fixed period, you're not going to be able to extend it. So return something within there. Otherwise, your collateral is gone. Just getting that right education and having the right features that that traders want around it, uh, I think will will bring bring the volume and bring the liquidity uh, during those times when it's when it's needed. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, as you think about other infrastructure partners or uh, you know other projects that are building kind of alongside you, uh, are there any key partners that you really are are either working with today, or any gaps that you you feel like you need to close to make sure that uh, your project can be successful? Yeah, I. I think we're first of all we're very lucky with our investor investor group. I think you you sort of asked about it earlier, and I, I didn't even touch on it. But and when we're looking at partners, we're looking at who can support us in the NFT ecosystem, who's who's engaged in DeFi and understanding. So we uh, you mentioned hearing that's what it was. You mentioned hearing about us early on because you caught us by our, our uh, lead angel investor Kieran when he was on your show, and he was excited to talk about how he was connecting us both in the industry and helping us understand what it takes to, to launch and, and run a project. And so we, we've we been supported by by him, and, and uh, he's also brought along uh, the CEO of One Inch to help back us, which really helps us. I mean, if you're going to think of who's going to be the best technology side and the best blockchain expert, you know, the, the number one DEX aggregator is, is exactly where you'd want to go. <laughs> good place so to start. Each, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're covered there. Uh, so bringing in that kind of expertise in the NFT and the GameFi ecosystem to help partner us, and I think we're looking to we'll be looking to leverage that and, and leverage his voice and uh, experience as as we move forward and start to grow our launch. But be, behind the scenes of our personal connections as well, uh, I, I can't really talk too much about it yet because nothing really nothing has been formally announced. But we've been talking to some of the bigger trading groups out there to say we've got this platform. And we bring a different value proposition to them. They get pitched day in, day out by these PFP collections, by these, oh, mm. we're going to be the new community. And like, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that, except for their holders who have seen it a hundred times. And like, they're yeah. in their community. They don't, they don't need another PFP project. We're build, building them a platform that they can come to and using the technology and the smart contracts to be able to execute trades in a different way and extract value for themselves in a different way. So we're, we're getting really positive feedback from that and both excitement around what they can do we hear you know we're in the meetings we're like oh i wish i could have done it for this xyz project or i've got this great use case that i think we can use for you and and we're taking that excitement to then get in front of their uh get in front of their communities to talk to them bring them in so that they they're aware of what's what's coming up uh and hope hoping uh for excited for them to support us as our onboarding for our, our private testing and our, our launch mm-hmm Oh, very cool. And and you're you're exactly right. I think uh, it was that interview with Kieran is the first time I heard about your project. So I even had the alpha before before my audience did. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and I've I've learned a lesson from this afterwards is I went to go try and find your project. <laughs> And I miss I misspelled it. So for our audience, when we're when we're saying dive, it's actually D Y V E, not not D I V E. Um, so if you're searching, uh, you're probably not going to find it unless you know that. Um, so this brings up kind of an interesting point, which is uh, marketing. Um, in order for you to be successful, you don't you don't really you're basically you know, helping to create a market where none exists today. So you don't really care if the value of a given product goes up or down because you're just connecting, you know, uh, buyers and sellers of that, you know, that kind of uh, price speculation. So how are you planning to market to get more eyeballs on your project to be successful? Yeah, as you've described, you know, our product is is somewhat unique in that for the ecosystem to succeed, we need both people. We need those holder, the long term holders, and we need the traders. And I think in the NFT space, holders are everywhere. Any community you go to, you know, for every every community, if you think who's who's bullish on it, it's it's the holders, it's the people that have the NFT sitting in their wallet. So we definitely know that people want to do more with their NFT. We know that there's enough long-term holders out there that want to be able to put their NFTs to work. And then on the flip side, it's the it's the traders and, and who are the people that are following the market more closely, have a little bit more of a, a trading edge and understanding to say, I'm going to be able to to use the platform to the, to the fullest extent and take advantage of the opportunities that it provides me. And that's where, again, we focused in on the bigger trading groups. Uh, 
in the ecosystem and they're you know it, it's one of the ones again i don't i don't want to name drop just yet because again we'll have we'll have some partnership announcements and we're excited for that uh, especially the ones that are, are see our vision and are in early with us i think it's getting in front of them to be the early users to be taking that taking that liquidity on the other side and those people as well are people who have conviction of, of a lot of projects that they've bought so that really gives us the double side of both the holders and the traders from those large communities as well as getting out and, and spreading our message across the ecosystem to all communities and it's kind of funny because when we're looking to partner and to talk to communities there is a stigma associated with short selling right you talk about being a short selling platform and like a lot of people, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, they, you know, they haven't, they, they've kind of heard of it. Oh, there's the GME and GameStop and it's memes and like, oh, it's not for me. It's too risky. It's bad, bad for my project. I actually think it's quite the opposite. Like if you're a community leader and you're watching this, come talk to us and I'll, I'll happily, you know, tell you why, but, uh, you know, starting here, it's for your community, you have, you have two things. One, you have to, you have to manage the expectations of your, of your holders and help provide if you've got an NFT, you have to help provide utility or something for them to, to do with their NFT along the way. So allow it, you know, our platform lets your holders take some value out. And instead of having to always hold and take that market risk and watch it go up and down, they can extract it from other people who want to just be trading the markets and taking that volatility. So you're giving something for your holders to do. You're also helping get to a more realistic price, uh, potentially a more realistic price for your, your NFT if you've really... Uh, you can prevent things from running up to such a crazy level to places that you'll never meet the expectations of the market. If you only have funding for something, then you have like one ETH, one ETH per person worth of funding and your NFT starts to trade to two, three, four. It's exciting, but now you have expectations that you have to deliver to this two, three, four, especially for all the new holders that are coming in at those pricing mm -hmm. versus instead, if you have the trading that, oh, it goes from one and maybe to one and a half and then back down to one and back to one and a half, like it can start to trade in a better range because it stays closer to its market realistic value and help you as a, as a founder, as a community lead and make sure that your project isn't trying to keep up with these wild speculative, uh, speculative valuations. Hmm. So you've got more utility for your, your holders. You've got uh, just better expectation management for your holders and really the best part because you think, oh, short selling, I don't want the price of my NFT collection to go down. I think obviously in this market, the attention market and the attention economy, you do, there is value in having your NFT prices high. But I'd say for every borrower, everyone who's a short seller, not only are they a new, a new trade in your ecosystem because they were never going to do anything to your ecosystem before, they thought you were overpriced. Now they're coming in and they're trading. So that's it, depending on your market and your, your royalty situation, that's another trade for your royalty. And so they're going to sell and it's a little downward pressure but they have to come back and buy to return an NFT. So they have to, if they're going to have that sell pressure, they have to come back in and buy to get their collateral back. Because if they don't buy, it means the collection's gone up anyways above where the collateral was. And so you're, you're happy as a, as a community leader because that's great, your, your price has gone up. And if, they, if the price has gone down a little, they still have to buy to support it back up. So you have someone coming in, generating two new trades, that's two new royalties, new eyeballs. They might just be a borrower who wants to try out your community. So there's value there. And it's not just a sell pressure, but it's sell and buy pressure. So you have this neutralizing effect that isn't just downward pressure for your economy and your, or your NFTs. It's, it's got both in there as well. Yeah. And, and I think to that point, if you're, if you're in the community of one of these projects, if the, if the basically floor price of your NFTs is at one ETH, it's all about perspective, right? Because if you had been holding for six months and you know it's slowly gone from half an ETH up to one ETH, you're really happy. You could be in that same project and if, if it spiked to four ETH and then all of a sudden it dropped back down to one, everybody in the entire community feels sad, right? It's the same project. You have the same asset at the same valuation, but because of the price swings you know, beforehand, you're gonna have a very different opinion of it if you're if you're basing things on again this this hyper volatile market and so yeah i think i think any founders that are really interested in a long term vision and actually creating a long term community with some clear utility um, they're going to want less volatility in in their prices and they're going to want it to be a fair valuation this um, i i think it was i think it was kieran on um, a twitter space that i heard just just yesterday was talking about this where he was doing raises and and said you know they were getting valuations like 50 million for alluvium in the i think it was the seed round 
And he said, you know, there was there's a lot of interest in potentially, you know, going to that level. And he said, you know, we that's great, but like that's not what our valuation should be. It's too high. And at the end of the day, they ended up raising, I think it was 35 million or so for that round. He said, you know, if if we all of a sudden create this massive wave of expectations that we know we can't reasonably deliver on right now, like that's going to put us back in the long run and we're going to be setting ourselves up for a longer term failure. And so if you're trying to set up something sustainable, um, I, I agree. Again, if you can remove the volatility from the equation, it's better for the founder and the community. Yeah. And it's it's not even that like with Dive, you, you can, it's not just profit in a, a bull market or profit in a bear market. It, you can potentially profit in all markets because it really is trading against that volatility. So I think it, it's not that there won't be any volatility or collections. There's still potential, especially as things grow to hopefully sustainably go up uh, if you're a holder. But it's it's just choosing, it's it's offsetting that the holder you just described who went from half an ETH to one ETH, as it ramps up to four ETH and then ramps back down, you know, think of those feelings that you're feeling along there, but maybe it goes to one and it gets to two and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna put this into dive. I'm going to get paid if I'm going to pay 0.3, something like that. Maybe you have such big volatility and I'm going to sit there, set a collateral super high. It's not going to hit it. That's fine. Let the, the trader make money as the market moves on the way down and you get back to one ETH, but now you've actually got an additional 0.3 in your wallet. And if you maybe did it two or three times along the way, because that takes time along the way, you might even have another ETH in your wallet mm -hmm. in just a short time, especially because of that volatility. So it's it's not even just good because sure it will help it'll help it could help control volatility a little bit, but it also gives holders the ability to profit along the way as that volatility is happening without what you currently can do, which is watch it go up and watch it go back down. Yeah, that's right. Anyone uh, like me that's lived through the last couple of years <laughs> in the market can we don't have to think very hard to remember some of those uh, those instances. <laughs> I can promise that. So, uh, so I know you're well connected in the space, and and obviously you see a lot of projects. Um, I uh, in in our gaming on the block podcast uh, just th that came out earlier this week. Um, we released some predictions for 2023, and so I shared some of mine. Again, most of those were kind of gaming focused, um, but I'm curious what you see in 2023 as you look towards the rest of the year as key themes or trends that you expect to arise in the industry. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm so excited about what NFTs are doing and the uh, the garbage that's being cleared out, making way for new innovation and excitement. I think that this year we're going to start to see early versions and we've already started to see early versions of quality games come out that are Web3 games that some of them don't even feel like Web3 games uh, because they're, you know, they've, they've obfuscated that away for the users because their, their focus is on growing markets for everyone, not just on a Web3 specific niche gaming user. Uh, so I'm excited to see that and to see those games come out. Uh, you know, we talked about Alluvium. I've already talked about Kieran as, a, as an investor. So I, I certainly I'll declare my bias there. But even with that, looking at the quality of Alluvium and the two, the two demo games that they've, they've put out uh, or the betas that they've put out, like it's exciting to see a game of actual quality that people are enjoying to play, not just because it's games and it's in Web3 and oh, maybe they can get a return, but because the game is fun to do, uh, the game is fun to play and uh, fun to watch. Like Those things are exciting to me. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, I also like uh, the STG uh, Super Team Games football game. I'm not even a football like I don't really enjoy football, but playing their mini like Madden style game four on four and you're trying it out, you're like, this doesn't feel like what we think of when we think of a, a crypto Web3 game is just an enjoyable game to play that on the back end has crypto. And we have, you know, we, within the Wolves, there's um, there's TriMetaFab uh, is, is I think that's their their Twitter handle is at tri, TriMetaFab by uh, Erod and um, the, the NFT uh, world community that they're putting out infrastructure that completely you know, removes the need for these game developers to have to learn the Web3 side and it just hooks you up. I think them and they've got Stardust as well that, that's doing similar things. Also another one of the members of the Wolves who, who leads that. And those kind of those kind of tools that are out there that are making it easier for developers to integrate the Web3 components into things that can just be fun and good, good products for users. Like I'm really excited about that and to see where things mm. come out this year, especially things that raised a lot of money and have been building and building and building maybe this year we get some of it probably even to into next year and i think 
The other big thing is that we're going to see, uh, I really like what, uh, what Gabe has been doing. Not all of his, uh, shilling on Twitter of every day, get, get whitelist, get whitelist. I think hopefully we're, we're past that. I, I can't see any more. Well, really not yet, I mean. but, uh, <laughs> but, but maybe by the end of the year, we'll see. But his, his uh, the the technology that they open source the the smart contracts around the royalties and things that yep. you can do not just with minimum minimum floor price but maximum floor price and he when he talks about it, it's funny people are so focused on the floor price aspect of that but there's so much more there about royalties and uh, distributing and building into the smart contract royalties and incentivization for the holders that can be given by the by the developers instead of just saying i'm going to develop it and i'm going to trust that you'll do the nice community thing right. rather and pay royalties rather i can build an incentives for you to behave in the way that i would like you to behave because i think that it's, it's right for the ecosystem and the product and those things are going to be just absolutely i think uh, game changers especially the affiliate market affiliate marketing tools there that will change how people not only develop NFTs and, and build build the infrastructure around it, but will expand on the free meta, the free mint meta, where brands are going to be able to release release NFTs into the wild in thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, that it will just make sense that it'll be more about the quality of what they're bringing to the table and the utility they're bringing and how they've incentivized and, and brought the right community and marketing and messaging around their NFTs. So there's there's so much excitement around that I, I think that the free mint meta is one that not only stays but expands and really blows up into the web two uh web two brands uh, and we'll see a lot more coming coming in with that uh along the heels of what uh what gabe and uh gabe is doing with digi uh digi daigaku it's like i can't <laughs> don't pronounce very well that's a mouthful for sure yeah, no, I, I think those are some really great predictions and, and uh, you know, kind of trends to keep our eyes on. Um, I actually want to lean into this, the the concept of Web3 gaming as it relates to your platform a bit. So I, um, again, I, I know you're you're into the gaming side of the, the industry. Um, I've shared in some of my interviews in the past that I'm the guy that, that worked the WoW auction house for hours and I, you know, I would spend more time at the auction house, you know, running, uh, you know, running calculations and macros and everything to figure out, all right, what am I going to be trading so that I would never run out of gold? I, you know, a lot of times I would rather do that than go out and, you know, <laughs> or trying for it. Um, yeah. So, so that's, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of a metagame player. It strikes me that while we're talking a lot about sort of NFT trading, most people are probably thinking about this from the PFP angle of your traditional NFTs. But I actually think if um, if you can get the right marketing, that that's not your real long term market. I think your real market is gaming because it, let me let me paint this picture for our audience. So let's say let's take Alluvium and you, know, we, you can you can add on whatever other games in the space you want. Let's take Alluvium and like Civitas with their chosen and like Artyverse and, you know, whatever, 50 different games. And all of a sudden you tell me, hey, if you have a, a strong uh, belief about the future value of any of these in-game assets. Again, I, I think you know we're focusing on a, on the Ethereum chain right now. But if I have a belief about any of these assets um, on the Ethereum chain, I have the ability to actually monetize that in either direction. Right? I, it doesn't have to be if I just assume it's going to go up. If I assume it's going to go down. Or if I know that it is generally going to go down on Fridays because Fridays is the day that there's a new quest that launches for a particular game or that people are always out, you know, grinding on the weekends. And so afterwards, they're going to sell everything. And so I have the ability to play the the economic metagame. Now, all of a sudden, what I was doing in WoW that was locked behind gold that Blizzard was going to keep in their servers when I was done with the game. Now, all of a sudden, it's real world. Um, this is a very different proposition and so i'm i'll be very curious to see but i think that nft gaming may actually be your long-term best bet in terms of volume as well when you think about you know price uh, price swings of assets and and again the the game developers they're fine too because right as long as they've got uh transactions that are occurring in their ecosystem they're getting small royalties off of that they're able to fund new game development like this is a win-win in my view for the entire sector yeah, I, I I love your thoughts on it. It's funny that we like we haven't talked about that before, but 
it's you know, we talk about Wolves now. Our focus, of course, is is in Game Five, and our, with Kieran being a backer, like I, I'm no stranger to the Game Five ecosystem. And I think that kind of long term vision, where right now there's a lot of there's a lot more volume, a lot more attention, and on the PFP and the utility side of of community oriented uh, NFTs, but it's not limited to that. It's not even limited just to to PFPs. Like there's art, you could have the you can have art blocks, you can have things that you want to. You don't really care which one you have, but you want to. Or with your squiggles, like there's so much there's so much opportunity there. And then you go to gaming, and gaming is certainly where I believe to be huge growth potential in the NFT ecosystem that. There should be, you know, there's so much talk about how do you have a healthy economy within GameFi, within a game community. And I think you need to, just in the same way that there should be a healthy economy for NFTs uh, in the PFP side, in GameFi, it's the same thing. And just what you've described of having the ability to monetize both ways of not just prices going up, but also prices going down it's just a second half of a healthy functioning economy. Mm-hmm. And so I a hundred percent, I agree with you. And I think we look at, we, we can look today to prove out that there is a model for this. There's a need for this. There's a, a desire for users to, to pay for this and have it be a functioning part of the NFT ecosystem and expand it out from there and show how can we, how can we integrate within NFT marketplaces that exist and make it simple? You buy something and come over to us with with a developer toolkit to to integrate with Dive. How do we get into games and have it be absolutely it's it's ingrained within the NFT ecosystem within games, but similarly letting the right lending and borrowing and uh, it's really giving making sure that the lender has the right control over what they're putting in and what they're saying they're okay with coming out getting those right it doesn't even have to be it doesn't even have to be crypto it could be other nfts and say go in with one pool and i'm okay with any well i mean certainly we're talking about receiving any nft from the same collection Mm -hmm. but maybe it's any nft with the same kind of trait with the same kind of rarity with the same group of nfts i I don't mind having that back and and having that that uh that play there so absolutely i think our our technology both proving it out from the proof of concept proving out how we can make it much easier for for holders to be able to set and forget instead of having to do it uh, one by one. How do we integrate into game economies and help them have healthier game ecosystems? There is a potentially huge, you know, multi-year and uh, certainly ambitious roadmap that we have that we're, we're excited to be building because I think You've described a need for it. You know, we talked about it in, in PFPs. You've described it in the gaming ecosystems. I think whole NFT ecosystems as well. As you look at different um, different chains. So of course we're we're EVM. We're not going to be just Ethereum forever. We uh, we were very fortunate. Polygon uh, was part of the part of the hackathons that we were a part of. Mm-hmm. They saw us. They recognized us and gave us some awards because. I think they they saw the same thing that we see for them. Yeah. Like they are going to be a huge gaming chain. They they are a huge they're, gaming yeah, chain. Yeah, no sure. question. There, you know, I think I look at them. I look at Immutable X. Uh, I'm starting to see Magic, the Treasure DAO ecosystem, uh, happen and 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 grow for gaming there. All you know, we're we're talking huge ecosystems. That there's an advantage to having a healthy ecosystem from the start. Mm-hmm. And the longer that we don't exist in those, the more likely that they follow the same thing that we've seen in ETH if things just run up and, and crash down on retail. But if from the start you can have that healthy balance, you can have I like I the thing that I hate the most, the thing that I really, really hate the most in the NFT ecosystem is seeing collections that run up to places that are just unsustainable and the amount of money that gets lost as you know, it gets sucked out by by sophisticated, potentially just sophisticated whales taking from uh, rug, then rug projects that could be put into ecosystems then and, and communities that are developing for the long term. I think that having that kind of healthy, you have so many people that right now they lose something big and they go, I'm walking away from NFTs Mm -hmm. versus I can invest in, be a long-term holder in something that can slowly grow over time. I can maybe extract some wealth and then I can keep investing in other projects as well. Like those, if we can help be a cornerstone in enabling healthier ecosystems, enabling better balance as NFT ecosystems grow across all these other chains, 
that would be, I mean, an incredible, uh, an incredible win for us. And I, I think hopefully the, the whole end of the ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. I think so for sure. So, so to the point, um, there's a lot of really good builders that are, uh, running different projects in the ecosystem. And I love how so many of them, even like you mentioned some of your, uh, theoretically, I guess, competitors, uh, in the space that you've got a lot of admiration for, um, could you share one project, obviously, other than Dive, that uh, you're really impressed by, and you know why is that the case? What about it makes you, um, you know, really interested and in, in, you know want to learn more, or support the founders? Uh, well, I'll start with the community, so maybe a little bit less in the platform because I'd be I'd be crazy not to talk about Wolves Dao, uh, Wolves Dao for a minute. Uh, so Wolves Dao, I know we, we talked a bunch, and and myself, I was I've been running it for, or one of the people in the admin team running it for over a year now. And we're a group of uh, investors and, and traders and, and just really GameFi, GameFi experts and really builders from all different parts of Web3 and Web2 that it's not, it's not token gated, but rather you're applying for it. And we're looking for people who are asking questions like what, what can they give to the community and not just what they can take from it. And I know we consistently, every week, we're bringing in more and more really high quality members mm -hmm. from across the ecosystem. We have an Activision uh, exec that came in recently. We have people from Delphi Digital, uh, part that just uh, had written part of the, the report that they dropped on their Web3 Outlook. Um, I mean, we're just, just people from everywhere that that's a group of builders. I think if you're looking for projects that I'm interested in, it's so many of that are projects that are coming out of, of the builders in, in WolvesDAO. So that's something that if you haven't, if you haven't checked us out and you're interested in GameFi, you should, you should take a look at them. And I think one of the ones that I mentioned earlier, the Tribe Metafab, they just had a, they just had a partnership again within the Magic ecosystem, I think, uh, with, uh, with Treasured. I don't know all the details about it, but what I do understand again of what they're trying to do and what they've been building of, of tools that allow developers to build, build games without needing to know the Web3, the Web3 side of it and just plug and play into the, into their code and their ecosystem, in, into their code so that it takes care of the Web3 aspects. I think those kind of tools are really exciting to see how they're going to be used, how they're going to be leveraged, because that's, we don't grow, we don't succeed if Web3 always stays Web3, where you need to know your wallet, you need to know what your your seed phrase is and, and how to keep it. I, you know, I hear of people that get their seed phrase and then they write it down and take a picture and it's like, well, don't, don't take a picture. Why, why you don't need to, you're so used to like, oh, well, I'm not going to remember it. Yeah. And then, you know, you have the awful, awful incident with, with Kevin Rose and, you know, right. everyone who's an expert and he, you know, he's just lost millions of dollars worth of NFTs. As, as long as that continues to happen, there isn't going to be, it's just going to be so hard to get that widespread adoption, but as tools allow, allow sort of semi-centralized or, or safe aspects where you don't have to understand all of that, that technology, you don't have to keep and, and be secure for it, but you still do own, you still do own those assets in a safe way, in a decentralized way. I think those are really exciting to help, uh, help grow the ecosystem. So, uh, I'm definitely bullish on what they're building and, uh, and excited for how those ecosystems, uh, will make it, take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And, and I, I agree on both. I, I have to say the, uh, the quality of the discussion in, in wolves is really, really high. And um, I, I'm always afraid that we're going to hopefully end up at some point increasing the numbers because you're going to out recruit me and I'm going to end up being on the chopping block at some point if I'm not careful. But um, <laughs> I, I really have to say that the community has been fantastic. And, uh, you know, again, deep, insightful discussions, uh, a lot of which we're out sharing on on crypto Twitter and other places. Um, but, uh, you know, like like this, but uh, it is a great community. So can can confirm. Um, so let, let me ask this. Let's say that, uh, you know, some of our audience, uh, a lot of our, our audience are going to be builders in the space. Uh, they're going to be investors. Um, they want to get more involved with Dive, but they're not really sure where to start. Uh, where would you say that they should go and what would their next steps be right now as of you know, end of January, 2023? Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we've started to grow our socials where we've gone the approach of a private discord to start because, because we're not an N NFT that people can just come and flip. We don't need a million people going when mint, you know, we want people that are <laughs> yeah. active in the, uh, and it's already, it's happened, you know, it, we want people active in the ecosystem uh, that are part of groups that are going to understand the value and be able to use it. So I'd say if you're you're watching this and you know what we're talking about interests you, head on over to a Twitter, 
follow us there. And then if you're lucky enough, we, you know, we're, we're slowly dripping out some discord discord code so we can grow at a sustainable and, and, uh, and manageable rate, uh, hop on in, ask some questions and, uh, you know, look to, we're giving out OG, some OG memberships, uh, OG roles that are going to help us identify people who we want to help, who are excited about it. We'll offer to do some, we'll do some beta testing and, you know, we understand the NFT, the NF, the, sorry, we understand the web three way in giving back and growing, growing to community. And certainly as we look to, to, as a platform, I think one of the goals would be to decentralize and put ourselves in the hand of the community, finding the right ways to do that and to reward our early users, I think is, is something that people understand and, and we understand too, and we'll be, we'll be looking to do. So, you know, follow our Twitter, hop into our discord and even for if you're in a community that that does active trading and you're like you know i need this tool you, you've already thought of 10 different ways that you're excited to use it for your own your own <laughs> nfts and your your community uh hit us hit us up on this on twitter hit us up on on discord to talk to us and say like hey come talk to our community i think we you know i think we'd be good good partners for you yeah. and especially if you're if you're watching this and uh, you're still early, then this is a, this is a good time to, to reach out and we'd love to come and talk to you. Yeah. And, and, uh, for all of our audience members, uh, I'll make sure that we have in the description of this video, check out below the links to all of those elements that Ulti mentioned. Um, so definitely, I think, I think, uh, we're going to have a number of, uh, DGENs that, that are really excited about the ability to go even further down the, uh, you know, down the rabbit hole with this. So, uh, I hope we get, uh, we get a number of them that join the dive discord with us as well. And make sure, make sure when you hop in, you let us know that you came, you came from here. Uh, we'll, we'll, so we'll be able to send some love, love back to Annie. Oh yeah, that, that'll be fantastic. I, again, I, um, I think very highly of, of you and of the project, and I think it's, it's going to fill a real need in the space. And so certainly if we're able to connect some of our uh, audience members here and, and builders again, uh, it could be really powerful. You know, one thing we haven't really talked about and, uh, probably can't go into too much detail. I'm actually really curious to see uh, if some of these Web3 gaming projects decide to sort of lean on uh, your platform as an additional element of gamification uh, of, of their economy, right? So as, as you're doing tokenomics design and you're doing NFT design and uh, internal game balance decisions and so on, um, you sort of build that out around all of the use cases that you can think of within your platform. But I always remind founders, uh, don't be surprised if your very well designed and architected concept gets completely blown up because somebody else outside is doing something with your NFTs that you had no concept was going to exist. And so this is a good example. You need to be aware that someone can build a lending platform. They can build a shorting platform and the list just goes on and on uh, as far as possibilities. I think the founders that recognize that those those possibilities exist and in some cases even lean into them are going to be the ones that are, are able to create something that's truly sustainable. Yeah, I think if you're if you're developing economies, developing games and you're focused on doing what you're doing to deliver deliver value to communities and the expertise you have, and you look at something like this and go, this, you know, this sounds like it could be something that's healthy for our ecosystems. Absolutely, you know, come and come and talk to us, and, and we can talk about how how it could look within your gaming ecosystem, how we can partner and, and make it better. Because certainly, one of my my primary goals is to is to make this space healthier. And I think, especially having seen so many bad game fi economies and, and things that go wrong, you know, finding the right ways finding ways to help them and balance them will be uh, you know would be a, a great advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me ask Ulti, any additional info or, or alpha that you want to release uh, for Dive, May, maybe even for some of your community members that are a little more familiar with the project already uh, that they don't know about yet? Uh, oh, it's because I like you so much. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a little something. Um, OK, I'll give you two. So the first and, and that, again, we've been keeping sort of close to our chest, I think, just in in talking about tokens and it's something i really try not to talk about on amas because again this sort of thing and i, I probably even i really should have said from the start like this none of what i'm saying is financial advice like i it's it is important for me to to say that because again it's it's not that i want you to go and speculate in, uh you know your life savings and do something irresponsible i think we're looking to build out a, t a platform that lets you come in and do what you think uh you know explore the opp opportunities that are in front of you uh in a way that makes sense for you 
but not because you know Alti's here and is telling you to do so. Mm -hmm. So now, now I've got that out of the way. I think the kind of the token side is something that, again, looking at what does a community look like and and how do we how do we decentralize and and get into the hands of the community is, is something that it's great that we don't need a token to run and to have product market fit to have a platform solving a problem for people but it's definitely something that we uh, you know we're looking at how can we how can we build sustainably for the future so you know when you're looking at that and you think who are who who benefits from that i think we'll, we're definitely looking to reward the the earliest users as best we can uh, so I would I'd keep that in mind as you're looking to see, you know, is your community, is, are you a trading community? Are you partnered with us yet? You know, thinking about what that could mean, what that could mean for you. Uh, and the flip side of that as well is, you know, when we're looking to to grow and to be sustainable, a lot of that takes, you know, takes fundraising. It, it takes a lot for all of the ideas that we have. It, it certainly takes, um, you know, it takes a team to, to build and to grow. So we did do a really limited strategic round with our uh, with Kieran and with with some early investors, which are are fantastic. And I, I think the alpha for you is that we're we're starting to certainly we're getting actually approached by different groups, which is really exciting that we haven't been putting it out there, and we're getting uh, getting messages about you know if if we've got a deck out there. So I don't even have anything to to send to them yet because they really are that early. So if you're watching this, you you might also still be that early, but we'll be looking. Uh, to do a little bit of, uh, to do some fundraising, because again, our, the vision that we have and the growth that we want to do and the markets we want to serve to be able to, to address so many of the problems that we're, that we're talking about, just, uh, we just want to go fast to get there and want to be, be able to build and, and build it right. So, uh, you know, I knowing your audience and, and knowing who, who's watching, if that's something that's of interest to you, uh, again, you, you, we've got our Twitter and you, you can reach out there and we'd love to chat. Awesome. That sounds great, Ulti. I, I'm, I'm sure you'll have some takers based on uh, based on the, the promise of the project. Um, wonderful. So any final closing thoughts that you want to leave with our audience today um, before we wrap up? Yeah, I think uh, I think, you know, coming into the today, if you're watching this and you 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 trade NFTs, you're in the ecosystem and you you think, how how can I profit? You know, I got to buy low and sell high. That That's really it. Well, uh, hopefully I've I've uh, prodded your interest enough that there is another way. There are other things you can do as long-term holders to, again, to earn without having to sell out of the communities that you love. And for traders, when if you're just like me and you're researching projects, you see 10 projects where one is good and nine are bad, you just put those nine to the side, you might actually be able to do something with that and be able to, to, to uh, trade on some of that. Uh, I'd say keep an eye for us. You know, we're excited to really unlock potential that before now was just totally unreachable. And we certainly see ourselves as a necessary tool for the, the ecosystem to, to not just, you know, not just to survive, but really to thrive in a healthy way. So uh, come and join our Twitter, come talk to us in Discord, you know, tell us about the strategies you, can, you can't wait to do with the NFTs you're, you're going to earn from. And, uh, you know, let's, let's make the NFT ecosystem better together. Awesome. I think there's uh, no better way that we could leave it with that. Then. So well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on, on the Dive platform in the future. I really appreciate it. Great talking to you. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Awesome. Thanks, man. Take care.